You know, everywhere we look this time of year, we make jokes in Minnesota about, uh, you know, road construction. And at the same time, we know how important it is to get all that work done. And we appreciate our construction workers working out there in the heat and the rain and the elements and doing all they do and trying to avoid traffic. You know, it's not an easy job. Uh, Dan, I know that we're going to be talking about roads and all the construction projects that are kind of happening all around us this summer. Thanks for being here. Well, good morning, Kelly, and good morning, listeners. And before we, uh, what if I were on the House floor right now, I would say I'd like to take a point of personal privilege. Uh, before we get into the show, I have a special guest who's with me today. Yeah, my eight-year-old daughter Polly got to stay home from YMCA camp, and she wanted to say hello to you and your listeners. Polly, Hi. it is so nice to meet you. How are you? Good. I'm good. That is great. We hear a lot about you from your dad. He's pretty proud of you, I think. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> and I can see the resemblance in your smile. I've seen pictures of you and Polly posted, and it's just, oh, wow. Yeah, that's definitely Dan's daughter. <laughs> Thank well, Polly, you. Polly, thanks for being here with us today. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, you know, I think uh, and one thing I'm really proud of the House of Representatives, we have a very family friendly culture. Uh, I've been able to bring Polly with me on the House floor in committee hearings, and uh, she actually, the chief clerk, respects her so much that she gets to help out on the House floor. She's come down and helped pass out amendments to members during session, and, you know, it's it's just so, so wonderful to be able to involve Polly in the work that I do. is is very, very cool opportunity. Polly, do you do so, you feel like you want to grow up to be like your dad? Do you want to be involved in community and government? He, yeah. Do you? Yeah, I really do. She should be a Girl when Scout. I in, when I was in preschool, um, they would always they would always like have these sheets of paper of what you wanted to do when you grow up, and I always said um work for my dad at the capitol Aww. and he was always really proud of me yeah i'm proud of you too because that's important work it's important work that he's doing you gotta yeah. be able to listen to people and you sound like the kind of person that can do that yeah yeah awesome well let's All right. get well, some info well, from your dad that. yeah yep. that is amazing well yeah so what are the you know speaking of the work at the capitol and the work at the house of representatives one of the, you know, we, we do a lot, right? We talked about the property tax reforms, investing in education. You know, there's a lot of things that are done, but you don't necessarily always get to see firsthand the direct results of that work. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I'm the most proud of that I've done in my six years representing our community is directly underway today. And like you said, we have we have five seasons in the state of Minnesota. <laughs> we have spring, summer, fall, winter, and then of course the fifth season. Everyone's favorite is construction season. season. Yes. <laughs> and I know that it's a pain in the neck, uh, but trust me, it's going to be worth it. So I'd like to talk about some of the local projects that are underway right now that I was able to secure in last year's transportation bill. Yeah, let's do that. What are we going to? Which project first? Well, I live over on the east side of St. Cloud, and on the east side, we always feel like we're kind of the forgotten <laughs> side of town. So I've really focused a lot on, you know, what can I do to help? Uh, there's a lot of momentum going for the east St. Cloud, and part of my job as the east side representative is to make sure that the state is helping out with those efforts as much as we can. Mm -hmm. So I was able to leverage my vote on the 2023 transportation finance bill to secure just under $10 million for two really important projects. They, they help out our whole region, but it really is how we get to and from the east side of St. Cloud. And the first of those projects is called Veterans Bridge. Now, don't get confused. It doesn't connect to Veterans Drive. That's different. Yeah. Veterans Bridge is that bridge that connects East St. Germain with West St. Germain. They're in downtown St. Cloud, uh, right? The bridge right by the convention center. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately, the concrete pavers that were stabilizing the slope under that bridge collapsed in the fall of 2022. Oh. And they put in some kind of patchwork repairs just to prevent further damage, but uh, that is not sustainable long term. And we, of course, you know, hundreds of people travel across that bridge every day. 
we want to make sure that it's safe and secure. And so, and plus, you know, what a, what a terrible image that would be for, for the east side of St. Cloud if the bridge that most people will cross to get to our community is collapsing. We can't have that, right? No, it's so, like a nightmare. Uh, so, you know, right. And unfortunately, too, I know that there were some encampments over there uh, this past year that we talked about on the show. And unfortunately, some of the, the homeless folks that were in those encampments were chipping away at the, even further at the infrastructure of that bridge. So very scary situation, but I'm proud that uh, that we are doing what we need to do. I was able to secure $750,000 to make those long-term repairs, and it includes a replacement of a portion of the bridge deck and rehabilitation of the bridge railing system, making that safer, making that more secure. Uh, obviously, we don't want anyone jumping off of there, so we'll have those railings be more secure. And there will be a, kind of a special, um, uh, what do you want to call it, blocking system or protecting system for the uh, for those foundations so that people can't go in and chip away under there yeah. or that the, the erosion from the Mississippi River, mm -hmm. uh, the sediment um, uh, doesn't occur. So... Again, very, you know, it's a very important bridge. That's how we get to the east side of St. Cloud. And now it is going to be go from, you know, having the the concrete pavers that collapse with patchwork repairs to now it's going to be one of the most stable and safe and secure bridges in the region. I'm, I'm so proud. That project is underway right now, as we all know, those of us who use that bridge to travel. But that should be done within a month or so. So oh, it shouldn't wow. be too much longer, but... Very, very key repairs to that bridge. Whenever you think about these kind of projects, there's so much involved. I mean, you, you think they could never get it done. I mean, they're dealing with such big pieces of, you know, concrete or whatever it might be. Well, and like you said, it's a credit to the men and women on our construction crews. I mean, they they put themselves at risk to make these projects happen. And we definitely owe them a debt of gratitude as well for their hard work. Absolutely. Making sure that we have the infrastructure we need to be safe. Yep, I do. I appreciate that a lot. And I'm really glad that we're getting the work done that we need to. There's got to be that person out there, I guess, that goes through and looks at our bridges and says, uh, you better do something over here. You're going to have tragedy on your hands. I don't know who that person is or those people are, but thank God we have those people that can recognize when things need to be fixed. That's right. And the the main thing is that we don't want just patchwork yeah. things for that, right? Because it's it's expensive to get this this kind of funding coming in. Uh, but I can't think of a better investment of our of our dollars yeah. than making sure we have safe roads and bridges. But it is a problem when you can't do that, you have to do these short-term expensive band-aids. And that kind of leads us then to the next project I'm excited to talk about. Uh, we are rehabilitating University Drive all the way from 15th Avenue southeast to Cooper. It is a, a major corridor for our region. Yeah. And it's how a lot of folks come to St. Cloud. If you think of it, uh, a lot of people will come off of 94 and they'll take uh, they'll take 9th, uh, 9th Avenue. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. To, you know, or they'll they'll go and they'll take Washington Memorial Drive, and then they'll get on university. That's how we get to St. Cloud State University. Mm -hmm. And that's a road that has been uh, has been decades since there's been any major improvements to it. And so I was able to secure $8.5 million for a rehabilitation of University Drive. And the project includes a full-depth surface replacement, again, from 15th Avenue Southeast all the way to County Road 75, and one thing I'm really excited about is we are going to include, this is brand new for this road, we're going to include dedicated bike lanes. Oh, and wow. there's going to be a dedicated bike crossing. Uh, because if you think of it, we've got that, we've got the Beaver Island Trail. Uh, and again, we want to we want to attract people to live in our core neighborhoods. And a big part of that is walkability and bikeability. So by adding the dedicated bike lanes, it is going to, again, just be one small but important factor that will make the core of St. Cloud a more attractive, welcoming, inviting place for people to come and live. And just to the, um, I'm trying to think of where that roundabout is, that is that to the north or the south? 
Um, you know where the other bridge is that has the dam and everything over there? Yep, uh, yep. That's, uh, that's all part of the project. Yep. That's part of the project, too? Yep, yeah. Okay. That, it goes down all the way from County Road 75 to 15th Avenue Southeast. And again, this will improve pedestrian safety along this corridor and on that bridge. It promotes that multimodal, you know, walking, biking form of transportation. And it'll be a big benefit wow. for the residents and businesses of the city of St. Cloud. And again, even for people who are visiting our community by having a nice state-of-the-art road on that major corridor. And back to the point about, uh, about you know, having to do these patchwork, short-term expensive patchwork things versus just making the investment and getting it done right. Another part of this project that I'm really excited about is that it is going to replace the utilities for the neighborhood from the Mississippi River to 15th Avenue Southeast. There's a if you if you know where Riverside Park is, mm -hmm. the utilities there that service the entire east side uh, are about I think they are about seventy or eighty years old. Oh wow! Uh, think about how much <laughs> our lives have changed in the past seventy or eighty years, and they're constantly having issues and needing to come out and make these expensive emergency short term repairs. Yeah. Well, thanks to this money that I was able to secure for this project going to get brand new replacement utilities that are state of the art that are going to totally um, make modernize and make more efficient of the utility process for the east side of St. Cloud and this will benefit the east side for you know hopefully long after you and I are here yeah wow <laughs> it's, it's maybe really, another really 70 80 that new technology <laughs> it's another 70 to 100 years that's right. Exactly. Gosh. So I just, again, I'm, I'm so proud and, and this is how we get the whole region will benefit from this, but especially for the East side of St. Cloud, this is how we get to and from East St. Cloud. And the fact that we are now going to have university drive and veterans bridge are going to be fully updated, safe, state of the art road and bridge. Again, I'm, I'm really proud of that. And yeah. The construction is annoying. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> well, we <laughs> have, to, I have to get we have to get creative. I have to go all the way up to Stock Rapids practically to you yeah, know be oh, able know. to go east to west. Yep, but, I know. You know I'm, I'm kind of falling that too when I'm trying to get certain places. The um the project now for the University Drive. What does that time frame kind of look like? That'll be later. Well, that'll com get completed later in the summer. Oh, is okay. What the plan for that is so. Again, it's uh it's a pain in the neck, but short term pain. For long-term gain, and these investments are going to make life, you know, it's going to improve traffic flow. It's going to, again, improve walkability, bikeability, short-term pain for long, long, long-term gain. Yeah. And like I said, it's it's really neat to be able to, to go out and to see those orange construction codes and say, that is state government at its best at work. That's the Minnesota House of Representatives doing his job, getting things done for the people of St. Cloud. I'm just, I'm so, so proud to see it. And, oh, I just can't wait to see the completed project. It'll be exactly really exciting, really historic moment for infrastructure in our community. No, we only have like a minute and uh, maybe a minute and 10 seconds, but we, we also have money for that Highway 10 improvement project too. Is that going to wrap up a, a portion of that project? That was a big project too. That's right. We're, that we're just getting the preliminary work done for design and, um, uh, for the first phase of that, but mm -hmm. you know high, that uh, between highway between St. Cloud and Clearwater, it's one of the most fatal and severe injury crash stretches of highway in the state. And so, I was able to get some dollars to go towards that, and that's we'll continue to to make investments in Highway 10 yeah. and in making sure that that's safe, and in making sure that all of our local roads and bridges here in St. Cloud are safe, are functional. There's nothing more important than making sure that we can get to where we need to go in a safe, secure, efficient manner. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you being here, Polly. I appreciate you sitting in with us today. Thank. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. It's Dan Wolgamott and Polly for our From the Capitol segment. Fun to have her with us today.